what is up guys so today we're going to start the installation process of the csl airbox but before we do so we actually add, need to add a sensor we need to add a map sensor reason uh, why we need to add a map sensor is because the original setup comes with a map sensor which the csl airbox does not use the um, map sensor is ran off of the uh, the intake uh, airflow and the map sensor is ran off of, off of your vacuum lines so we need to add that uh, sensor in order for our csl airbox to uh, to work properly so i'm going to be going over the steps and ways to do so so the uh original csl um, map sensor was actually located here into the in this air rail right here and it was uh, situated somewhere around there but this part uh, is basically hard to obtain these days and uh, if so it's very expensive so there's a couple other ways that you could run a map sensor i actually found a very affordable way to do so so uh let me show you what i have planned how to add a map sensor to this uh setup so uh, the ma the sensor in question is this little guy right here this is the part number right here it's exactly the same type of sensor that came with the original setup it has the same scaling and uh, we're going to be adding this utilizing this little t connector that has a flange to attach this sensor to which is kind of neat if you are interested in this type of adapter you could message me on instagram and i could share the information uh, or obtain it for you this t costs about 20 dollars which is fairly inexpensive compared to other options that are out there on the market so uh you need this this little adapter and sensor so the adapter is 20 bucks the sensor you could get anywhere from like 30 to 40 35 to 40 dollars you'll need a pin or wire with a pin to add into the uh, ecu and you also need two other wires a ground wire and a, uh, and a voltage wire that you have to tap in which i will show you once we start the installation process and you'll need some t connectors or whichever way you prefer to tap in into your uh, ecu uh, power line and also you need some clamp uh, to clamp the sensor down so the t is going to be actually situated this is the vacuum line that that goes off of the um air rail so we're going to be actually tapping and using this connector we're going to be situating it right here on this bend so it's gonna be situated in this sort of way and then we plug the sensor right in on top and then we'll do the wiring so let's tap into the line first and then uh, we'll go step by step and there it is that simple you just cut the line put two clamps on the side put that after in and uh, plug the sensor right in you need a m6 uh, bolt here so you could uh, tighten it now what we're gonna do is we need to wire it with the dme so it's uh, fully functional aside from wiring we also need to do a program it as well but that will get to that once the actual airbox is um, installed let's take uh, the um, cover off of the ecu off and we're gonna be uh, i'm gonna show you where you need to add that pin and which line you need to tap for the ground and the power source before you uh disconnect anything you want to make sure your battery is disconnected you don't want to fry anything by accident so that would be just the beginning of a bad day so disconnect your battery and then you have to undo those connectors you just press i already started just press this here and this moves down but first you need to disconnect the first one this moves down and you could take out the second one and the third one as well like that so the uh, connector is it located in this third plug this big one right here there's three there's a small one the bigger one and the biggest one so 
we move those to the side and we need to dismantle this plug the uh, the top portion of it which is very easy take small screwdriver flathead screwdriver and see there's a notch over here where you could just lift and see once you get past that ledge it just slides out boom there it is so we have this is where all the pin locations are and it's numbered from 1 to uh, 13 and on the back side is 14 through 26 because there's two rows so uh we're interested in position number 18 but we're gonna get to that so let's go back to the bench and assemble the plug also you will need this connector this is a diesel common rail connector in order to have it plug in into the sensor you also need a uh, pin to add to your ecu along with the with the line uh, we're gonna make the ends for this bosch plug uh, so we need three wires i happen to have the same color wires because i had an old harness from my um x5 uh, that i did not was not using and there was wires in there the same color as the wires in the uh, ecu over there so i used the uh, red and uh, and green wire and uh, green and brown wire red and green is for the um, power brown and uh, green is for the ground and the black wire is the signal that i bought along with the pin to plug in into the ecu let's assemble these uh, these connectors at the ends over here need this type of crimp connector to make things easier for you your ends already finished before you crimp them you want to put these rubber bushings on there that way when you slide it in plug it so there's no moisture that that could get there or any other debris so you want to take your sensor you want to make sure the way it uh, plugs in like so and on the sensor you have numbers one two three so those are the positions the first position on the on the sensor which is one the first pin is gonna be our uh, power which is our we're gonna designate it red green uh, wire so we take the our plug and we designate it in this manner so we plug it in into the first position which is corresponds with with number one pins are flat like this so we want to make sure this goes in flat because otherwise you won't be able to plug it in your your harness if if it's not flat so they have to go like this in there it is it plugged in you could check if it if it uh, works it does work now the second position is going to be our ground so our ground is brown and green wire so we're gonna plug it into our second position and there's number numbers on the on this end as well so make sure this goes in so sideways like this like that and uh, our number three is our signal which is the black wire that we're going to plug into into the ecu before you plug this in you want to make sure it it does work there it is it goes over like so there you go your pins are working so now we could insert these uh little bushings take your little your little screwdriver and you just push him in like so and the insulation you could just move it up you could adjust it and heat shrink it later there it is we have our plug so this end is pretty much done 
so now we could go on to the car end and we could take care of the pins plug this into the correct slot and we could basically finalize the whole setup all right now that we have our plug uh, we want to route it uh, we want to pass it to this insulation here there's a you could st stick the end over here and take it out right here that way it will be routed uh, like OEM um, wires would so we passed it through here like I mentioned through this grommet right here it goes around here plugs into our sensor so it's a fairly clean uh, clean pass through now we got our three wires so we need to uh, connect it to the appropriate uh, pins so our black wire is our signal it already has a pin so we need to match it to pin to slot number 17 and like I mentioned the slots are numbered so you have to count it and you'll notice when you start counting uh, slot 18 I'm sorry uh, slot 18 is empty so this is 14 right here 15 16 17 18 this is empty so we take our black signal wire and plug in the the pin in, in the empty slot there you go so that part is done our signal is taken care of next wire we're going to be taking care of is the ground which is uh, slot number 17 on on our harness so it's a slot prior to the one that we inserted this one we need to tap it's a uh, orange and brown wire so uh, you just follow it through and find a good spot to tap it looks like this will be a good spot so we could tap it right here i put a tap on the uh, brown and orange wire for our ground the end connector here and we just plug in like so now we're left with our power which is our red and green which on the plug is pin number seven so pin number seven is right here to 13 one two three four five six seven right here which is our red and green wire so we'll have to tap this pin right now so there's our top for the red and uh, and green wire which is our power right here so our wiring is complete so we could slide this connector back in to its original spot like so and we could start plugging it it in back to the ecu And there it is, our wiring is complete. And we could just basically put the cover on. Our sensor is uh, is connected. Wire is discreetly hidden below here, goes through the grommet here. And uh, out comes out here to our ground and our power taps. And the signal is plugged in as well. So this part of the, uh, of the install is complete good way to test if you have uh, power to the uh, sensor is just before you do the coating and stuff is uh, if you take the plug out and stick two wires in the ground and the uh, power uh, pins which is the red and uh, and the green and the, and the brown if you attach them to your leads you should have about five volts coming through Boom, there it is. I don't know if you could see. Five volts, that means we got power. You can't test the last pin because uh, it's not active yet. But uh, you know at least the taps are working.